Hi, Robert. You okay? Hello, H hello, Pete. Sorry if you got at cross purposes. I thought you were the <laughs> International Christian Church. Have I got that wrong? Yeah, which Jehovah's Witnesses. Right. I've also been reading your book, Enjoy Life Forever, but I was expecting a call from the International Christian Church, so I got I got that wrong. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's all right. It's just because did you think we were connected to the international, or because we have to answer any questions based on our publication? No, no. It's just that recently I've been I've been um, reading the publications of the ICC, and I thought ah. you're ICC. I do beg your pardon. Some time ago. I mean, I still pick it up occasionally and look at it. I've been reading your book, Enjoy Life Forever. Yeah, excellent. Sorry. And what, what triggered your interest? Living in a paradise earth? Um, well, I was puzzled about several things in the book. Um, mm -hmm. Lesson 54. The role of the faithful and discreet slave. Uh, in the summary, let me just go to the summary on page 228, it says the governing body is the faithful and discreet slave appointed by Christ. It gives direction and spiritual food to Christians earthwide. Now, I remember doing a big study on this and looking at this many, many weeks ago. Well, a couple of weeks ago. And I found out that you teach or you claim that the governing body was appointed in the year 1919 to be the faithful and discreet slave. Um, the Watchtower, here it is, 15th of July, 2013, page 22. In the box at the top of the page, did you get the point? The subsection appointed over his domestics. It says, quote, In 1919, Jesus selected capable anointed brothers to be his faithful and discreet slave. Now, I was puzzled by that. Is there any biblical evidence that Jesus appointed a governing body as his sole representative in the year 1919? Well, if you go back, what we do, we follow the patterns of early Christianity. And if you, you sound like you're a knowledge or learned person, is that when Jesus had died and gone back to, or had gone back to heaven after he was resurrected, then Paul and Peter and all these guys they got together and formed what was classed as a governing body at that time to help establish the christian congregation that's not found in acts chapter 15 it doesn't say governing body in the greek text anywhere well, um, well you could say elders older men but the ones that would try and make sure that the teachings were in line with what jesus had explained to them now as a change from judaism so you won't get word for word, but there was the, you think about Peter preaching, you've got Paul there, you've got James, John, these ones, then when a dispute arose or when they needed to organise themselves, and said so they went to the brothers in Jerusalem at the time and took advice from them. Um, any, the Baptists, the Methodists, the Catholics, the Seventh-day yeah. Adventists, anyone could just read Acts 15 and say that applies to us. Your book, your Watchtower says in 1919, Jesus selected mm -hmm. capable anointed brothers to be his faithful and discreet slave. Acts chapter yeah. 15 is not talking about the year 1919. It's talking about roughly, I don't know, AD, 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 AD 50, maybe AD, I don't know, AD, AD 45. I'm not a biblical expert. I'm not a scholar. Um, but it doesn't, it certainly isn't set in the year 1919, nor is it talking about the year 1919 in any sense whatsoever. And the word governing body is not used in the Greek text of, of Acts 15. Your book says in 1919, Jesus selected capable anointed brothers to be his faithful and discreet slave. Lots of different groups make similar claims that God chose them yeah. as his sole representative on earth. Mm -hmm. Seventh-day Adventists say they, they were chosen by God in the 1840s. Mormon mm -hmm. claim, the Mormons claim God chose them in the 1830s, the Christadelphians, yeah. I think, in the 1860s, Victor Paul Werwell claimed God chose wow. them in the 1850s. You know you <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> I used to be a Pentecostal, and I got involved in a very extreme Pentecostal group um, wow. called the Oneness, or the Apostolic yeah. Movement, Jesus Only. Um, yeah. They make similar claims. Is there, can you show me where in the Bible does it say God will choose 
a faithful and discreet slave in the year 1919. It's the year 1919 wasn't significant in that sense it was it wasn't a march year but when you look at biblical prophecies of when if you go back to 607 when the fall of jerusalem you come all the way down to 1914 1914 was the year that we say from scripture that satan was kicked out of heaven and that was probably a pivotal date in the sense that it ties in with bible prophecy and after that time God's king, God's uh, church, so to speak, went through a refi refining process until they were ready to act as what we class as a faithful slave of a governing body and to dispense what we class as spiritual food. So when we say 19, it didn't, it didn't have to be, it could have been 1920, what we'd not fixed on the year, there was no well, specific well, yes, year. Yes, you are. Your literature says it was in the year 1919 that Jesus selected... A, yeah, but that wasn't a chosen year. A that faithful and discreet slave. Yeah, you, you're yeah. very fixed in saying it was the year 1919, the day yeah. after Rutherford and the other uh, seven leaders were released from prison. The day after they were released from yeah. prison, that's when Jehovah chose... Yeah, what I'm, what I'm saying to you though, that, that wasn't... You know, like you got 607, 53 BC, you got 30... That wasn't a fixed date. It could have been 20, 1920. But if you claim it was thing. 1919. You, yeah, you... but I'm saying it didn't. That wasn't the year that was fixed in Scripture. The brothers were released from prison. If they were released a year later, it would have been 1920. So we if, so if yeah. I go to prison and I'm released from prison, I can say that Jehovah <laughs> has chosen me. No, I'm just saying I don't want you to get tied with that date that we said from 2000. That, that date mm. was fixed. It was just that you know, the way they were arrested, they're put in prison for a year, then they came out. If they, came, if they did two years in prison, when they came out, then it would have been that date. So that date wasn't a date set in Scripture. So there's no scriptural proof for this at all? I don't have to believe it because Scripture doesn't teach it. <laughs> well, I'm saying for that particular date. When you look at the dates, and you've got the fall of the, the Gentile times and all those things, the no. date of 1990, it could have been 1920 if they were kept in prison for two years. I mean... Jerusalem did not fall in 607, it, 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 it fell in 587, 586, 587. Uh, you know, all of the encyclopedias and Bible dictionary give that date. No one says Jerusalem fell in 607. Um, the Watchtower used to teach that the last days began in 1799. Christ's second presence was 1874. Christ became king in 1878. It wasn't until decades later they did away with 1799 and taught second presence of Christ was from 1914. I believe it's October 1914, is it? Um, hey, you want to catch me out on dates, but we, right. we think the lights got bright in 1914. When you talk about pivotal dates, 1914 is a, a, as a year that would say, yes, it happened. Now, if you said it was October, September... Whenever, in 1914 was the year when the world went mad. Well, I'm, I'm, I can't <laughs> see that in scripture. I, th I did read in your literature that it was, it was October 1914, but the First World War didn't begin in October 1914. You could say that Satan was cast out of heaven in October 1914 due to the First World War. The First World War began in late July 1914, and it began in very early August. Uh, for the British and the French involvement in the First World War, but it started, mm -hmm. it started in late July when Austria attacked Serbia. Yeah. Um, you you mentioned spiritual food. Let me just read that. Um, page two two eight again. The summary: the governing body is the faithful and discreet slave. I mean, I want. Could you prove that? Appointed by Christ, where does it say a group of men have been appointed by Christ? Because the Pope says he's appointed by Christ. The, the Mormon leaders say they're appointed by Christ. Lots and lots and lots of Pentecostal groups claim that they have a special appointment by Christ or by God or by Yahweh or by Jehovah. It then says it, that's the governing body, gives direction and spiritual food to Christians earthwide. What is spiritual food? Just enlightenment about Bible verses and texts to help you to understand where we are in the stream of time and how we believe from Scripture this wicked world, not the world, physical world, but the 
world of wicked people will be finished very, very soon. So we know many people that, John, unlike you, you're very good. There's many people that read Bible for years and don't come to any spiritual enlightenment. They just think it's a good book and it comes out at birthdays, Christmas, celebrations. But you, as we say, that Bible to us contains spiritual food. Sorry, what is spiritual food? Just define that term. In enlightenment, the ability to read and understand what these things mean for our day. Where's that in the Bible? And I'm looking for the exact phrase spiritual food. Which, by the way, is used once in the Bible. Only once in the Bible. Where does the Bible say that's the meaning of spiritual food? Is it Matthew 24? No, it doesn't say spiritual food. It says food. What does it say? Food, yeah, food, well, the thing is, food is not physical food. It's spiritual enlightenment, isn't it? So Jesus said that his, his food was to do the will of his father. He used food as a spiritual task, wasn't it? Um, he's yeah. using it there as a synonym, but the one instance of spiritual food is 1 Corinthians 10, 3, and it means physical food. It's referring to the manna that fell from heaven. Do you mind if I just read from verse 1 to get the context to show you that? Yeah, but when you talk about the physical food for the manna, yeah, they're just using that as an example. We, we've, could, we could, can, I, could I read the text of the Bible? Because to me, I, I want to get what I believe from the Bible. Do you mind if yeah, I read what, the Bible? Yeah, but what I'm saying though, but the spiritual food, when you read about manna, that was literal. Yeah? That was literal. We're talking about spiritual stuff, enlightenment, that's not no, physical. No. Food. Could 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 we start with the Bible, read the Bible, and see what the Bible says about spiritual food? Because there's only one instance, there's only one one occurrence of the phrase spiritual food in the Bible, at 1 Corinthians 10 3. Would you permit me, sir, to... to yeah, yeah, you can, yeah, 100%, yeah. mate. Thank you, thank, thank you. Um, OK, by the way, which congregation in Manchester are you? Withenshaw. Withenshaw, OK. Um, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, all were baptised into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. So spiritual food is not understanding the Bible. Spiritual food is food that's been supernaturally provided by God. It's physical food. It's the manna from heaven. And spiritual drink is just water. It's physical water that sustains our bodies uh, that was supernaturally provided by God in the wilderness. It doesn't say spirit food. It's no. spiritual, plumaticos. Plumaticos no, means supernaturally provided by God. Yeah. yeah. Well, what we're saying there, there's two separate things, and that scripture and what happened with Moses, they had a literal, they had direct instruction from God. He was able to talk to Moses and speak to the people. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. spiritual instruction of how they should work, we would class, that's what we would class as spiritual food, the physical manner that came from heaven sustained their physical bodies. So, according to the Bible, spiritual food is the manna from heaven. It's physical food. It has no other, no other definition in the Bible. Okay, all right. Let's say this then. For you now to read the Bible yep. and to get the understanding yep. and to take in something spiritual, that's not a physical thing, is it? That is you looking at the Bible, reading scripture. Ah, oh, I get that. I understand that. That's not physical that's a spiritual enlightenment, isn't it? So we don't want to cross swords on this. We, this okay. is what we're looking at. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Well, look, thank you very much yeah. for your help. Yeah. Um, I'm extremely grateful. I've um, not for now because I've taken enough of your valuable time. I've oh, also been you. looking at Jesus's resurrection. And Say it again, my friend. Say it again. I've also been looking at Jesus's resurrection. Maybe for another time you could help with lesson 15 paragraph well, three you know, you, you know when you say i can help <laughs> i um, can't help you <laughs> which which says after jesus's life as a human ended he was resurrected as a spirit now i believe when jesus resurrected he resurrected in the same body that he died in i don't believe he resurrected as a spirit maybe some other time you might be able to help yeah, with that. You're, right, you're right on that because if people recognized him if it was a spirit they wouldn't have recognized him would they you're right. I think it would take a lot of time to look at this, maybe some other time. But you're right on that one. I would agree on the f parting ways. He came back, Mary and that lot, when they saw him, said, ah, 
That's our kid. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand your answer. He obviously was not. He didn't resurrect as a spirit. No, they say they recognised him. He had a. He took a human body so that they could see him and recognise him. But it was the same body that died on the tree that was resurrected. It wasn't a different human body. Well, that's what I'm saying, because they, they must have recognised him, so I'm agreeing with you on that. Right, but Jehovah's Witnesses disagree with both of us. They say he resurrected as a spirit creature. If you look at the insight in the scripture, it says that Jesus resurrected as a spirit. The body was done away with, that's why the tomb was empty. It was dissolved into gases. And then he resurrected as a spirit that post-resurrection manifested about um, eight to ten, depending on how many post-resurrection um, appearances there were. Right. He, he resurrected a different temporary physical manifested body on each yeah. of those occasions. Yeah. Well, that's not what I've said. I've said the opposite of that. We're not agreeing. I've I, I've said the complete opposite of that. I hold. I would understand. I would hold to the standard Protestant position on that. Maybe if you look at that, yeah, um, you, you look at the inside of the scriptures. Maybe we could talk. You know, when yeah, it's convenient, some yeah, other, some other time. Pause, yeah. um, just I can never speak on a Monday. Other days are fine, but you've got to give me at least a day's notice, far text of a precise, yeah. exact time. Yeah. Yep. And I can speak How on can Zoom. I... I can speak on Zoom or speak on the phone. Yeah. I'm 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 Robert. I'm pleased to meet you. You are Pete. You got me. I'll oh, do Pete. Text you. Pete. Yeah. Okay, Pete. Thank you very much. Right, mate. You be good. Cheers, Robert. Bye. -bye. Cheers, Cheers, Pete. Bye. Bye.